Welcome back to the Gapster channel. My name is Gabby. I'm going to talk today about uh, the D11 DAC that I've been building for quite some time now. I've had a lot of uh, questions and requests on where is that DAC, where it's, uh, how far are you and uh, what's been going on. So here it is. This is the update. Uh, we'll call it part three. Uh, I've come a long way. I've built uh, all the wooden enclosures, many parts. I've actually completely built the uh, power supply as well. And um, so uh, we've come a long, a long way, but we still have quite a bit to be done. So I'm just going to give you a little update on uh, how far I am and what's been going on. Uh, there will be a separate video on the different components. Uh, some people want to know every little detail on how it's been done and some people just don't want to be bored with all the little details. They just want just a general idea. So uh, this is going to be like an update of a general idea of what's been going on. And uh, I'm going to make separate videos. There'll be one coming up soon about the power supply because it's already completely built. And there'll be another video on the main uh, DAC unit as well. Uh, and some will be in detail and some will be more like a general overview. Please subscribe and some thumbs up keeps the video going a long way. That's pretty much I'm on doing this for you guys. So a little support uh, it costs you nothing will help the channel keep on going. This is going to be uh, part three. Uh, there's a couple of parts one and part two. I'll put a link in the description below. This is going to be like an ultimate DAC based on uh, ultra capacitors and it's just going to be running on very pure uh, basically uh, power uh, supply. It comes in two units. This is the uh, power supply unit which is almost complete and this is the main unit which is going to be I'm um, still in the building process but I've already uh, done quite a bit. It's as you can see it's pretty hollow inside. Uh, it's just a shell right now but I've done quite a bit. Uh, into planning and the building the whole case. It's going to be the display here. So this is uh, still all in the, at the beginning stages. Well, I won't say beginning, but quite a bit. Uh, there's still quite a bit to be done in here. Uh, on the other hand, the power supply is fully finished and I'm going to have a separate video on building this guy. But in this video, I'm going to give you a little update on how far I've come along uh, I here. A lot of people have been asking what happened to the DAC project and uh, can we see some details and all that stuff. So there's people who want to see every little detail and people that just want to see a general idea. So I'm going to talk today about what's been happening since my last video and uh, how far I've come along. And I'm going to make separate videos about each component separately and how it's been built. So uh, this video is going to get you an up to date on how far I've come along. Uh, so yeah, without wasting too much time, we're just going to just get you up to date on uh, how far we've been gone so far. So I started uh, trying to do the layout of the, uh, the all the components. I did planned the layout before because that's how I ordered the case to fit everything and it's going to be jam-packed. Uh, so these are the uh, the ultra capacitor banks. There's three of them. There are going to be two more. I haven't put those together yet but so this is going to be the, uh, the Raspberry Pi and the Ian Canada stack and um, so this is going to go over here. So it's basically double insulated and on top of that is going to be the cover for this one and that's how the uh, Ivan transformers will go. So these are, so this is the Raspberry Pi has its own enclosure separate from the FIFO Pi and the rest of the in Canada stuff also have its own enclosure and uh, the transformers have their own enclosures. So it's all basically, I don't know, double or triple isolated. It's a lot of isolation here going on. Uh, inside here, so this is uh, the, uh, the stack. On, uh, so you can see this is the uh, station pie at the very bottom. 
and here you could see the uh, Phi for Pi. Uh, I'm talking about isolation on top of the uh, Phi for Pi, just to, and to cover all the uh, the clocks. There's another barrier of copper, also for more isolation um, from any for more shielding. I mean, from any. Um, Cozy clocks uh, themselves are a little bit noisy and you don't want that affecting the DAC portion. Uh, there's going to be some more copper covering even more and I might even cover the actual clocks. Once I know which clocks I'm, I'll be working with. Right now they have silicon clocks. I'm going to try the Crestec ones and maybe some other thing then we'll see which one will settle on. Uh, so this is the, uh, the dual mono DAC that goes on top. So now another thing is on the bottom here you will see there are four pads of uh, sorbacane and this is for uh, vibration. There's more pads here as well. Six pads it's for to, to remove any, any vibration and that's going to make the clocks run even better. And uh, so the, uh, the uh, sorbacane is will be down down on the bottom here and that whole thing is going to be uh, isolated from vibration from the rest of the system. So this is going to be here and this is going to be over here like that and it goes and the uh, this is where the transformers the four transformers are going to go on top of all that, something like this, and now, now it goes all the way. This is another uh, little stack by in Canada. From this is uh, the uh, uh, linear pie on the very bottom, and on top it's a UC uh, conditioner, and uh, basically it's a double bank of ultra capacitor. These are very large. These are 325 farads. Uh, they're put in series, so that should give us half of that, and uh, that's going to be a 5 volt supply because these are rated 2.7 volt each. And, uh, and this uh, little stack is going to be housed here somewhere. So, something that's going to be like this, and there are going to be two more banks of ultra capacitors here. This is going to be the, the system for the uh, VU meter. And that's going to go somewhere here. I'll have to find a place for it. I will tuck it in here. So that gives you a little general idea of the layout um, of the system and how all the pieces are going to go. Got some nice uh, walnut wood. We're going to use that to uh, build uh, the D11 uh, deck. And that's the piece that I just cut. Things are starting to take shape. So we've got this uh, building all the wood here. We already almost finished, I already almost finished the, uh, the front. This will go here. And this little piece will go in here. As you notice, so it's open in the middle. And there's going to be a piece of glass that's going to go right right in here. There this goes here. So here you can see the uh, power supply in it. It's pretty much finished. Finally it took a very long time and got very complicated. Um, it shouldn't have been but it is. It's always easy when you think, oh, it's going to be just three transformers, a couple of things, blah, blah, blah. But when you try to put it in a functional unit, it's a whole different uh, story. It got a bit complicated because I really wanted the unit to trigger a, an amplifier with a 12 volt trigger. Uh, so you want, when you turn this thing on, 
uh, your amplifier to turn on. In case you're running a tube amplifier, which I always pretty much do, uh, I want it to be able to turn it off after a certain time. So I want to be able to have a time delay and after that the unit will shut down the amplifier. So you need the trigger out and I figure I might as well have a trigger in in case the preamplifier wants to trigger this thing in. So it has a trigger in and a trigger out. And I also have a trigger that's a momentary trigger in case you want to control an amplifier that has a tiny little push button, a uh, vintage one that does not have uh, a, a particular trigger input. So this is the back of the unit here. You could see uh, each uh, AC 12 volt output has its own fuse and uh, at the end they go all run into one of the cable and it terminates here with the uh, with the DB15 cable. And you can see on the back we have the trigger in here, trigger out and a momentary trigger and this is the AC uh, input. So it's all uh, pretty much uh, simplified here and uh, just have to uh, plug this uh, DB15 cable into the, the unit, uh, the, the, main, uh, the main DAC, and that will supply power. Uh, remember the DAC is running mainly on ultra capacitors, and this cord is only supplying AC lines just probably, I would say, two, three minutes every three to four hours. So it's uh, not even possibly even one minute every three to four hours. So it's pretty, pretty short lived and uh, mostly uh, it is running on a pure ultra capacitor power. So, and uh, on the other side, this is the cover, the wooden cover that you could see earlier. And uh, it's got the, the little display here that connects to it and it goes into uh, the unit in here. So what's all this? These are a little s bunch of circuits I put together. Um, kind of, uh, you can buy them all off Amazon or eBay except for a couple of things I made myself, but I'll just explain to you quickly what they are. This particular one here is, a, is an on-off, what we call flip-flop uh, switch. So basically you push the button, it goes on, you push it again, it goes off. And so it's an on-off switch and that's going to do uh, the power. And uh, because it's a small relay, although they call it 10 amp relay, I did not trust that little relay to power three huge transformers. So this little relay is going to activate the big, the big guy relay here. And that one will activate the three transformers. Uh, when the relay switches on and off, you don't want it to spark. Uh, transformers have tendency to spark when you first plug them in. You probably have noticed that sometime you're plugging in appliance and you feel a little spark. And so after a while it deteriorates the switch. To avoid that, I designed a little snubber circuit here. It's basically a little capacitor and a resistance in series. If you Google a snubber circuit online, you, you can get an idea of uh, what to use for that. So that's going to activate the unit, all these three transformers on and off. Then we've got uh, a couple other things here. Here we have a timer circuit and the timer, it basically, you set the time you want it to go on and after a certain time it's going to go off. So it's going to trigger a small uh, relay here and that's going to send a signal to the on off button to shut it down. So that's, uh, that's uh, the uh, timer uh, circuit. And then we have another relay here, and that is to trigger uh, a momentary something. Let's say you have a very old amplifier that only have an on-off switch, and you could actually trigger it with, with this one. <coughs> it's, um, it's also completely isolated from anything, so if anything happens, there, no, there will not be any power from here to, to the amp or the amp to here, so nothing will get damaged. Uh, and that leads us with the uh, trigger in uh, input. So the trigger in is, is the relay here. This relay, when it senses 12 volts, will click in. Once that clicks in, it sends a signal to, to here to turn the unit on and the unit uh, goes on. 
Uh, here it's just a regulator. Uh, this transformer, uh, it says 12 volts, but <laughs> the old transformers, they always, uh, when you if you don't have a heavy load, it fluctuates. They have the voltage fluctuates with the load a little bit. So there's a regulator here to make sure the voltage stays is pinned down to 12 volt. So that's what this this thing is. So yeah, this is in a nutshell what goes on. There's a little switch here to turn the timer on and off. Uh, I didn't want to clutter the front face, so it's activated. You can reach it from the bottom. And also there's three little buttons to adjust the time if you want to adjust it and also from the bottom from the bottom I didn't want them to be visible and, and clutter the aesthetics of the unit uh, I try to tie that tie everything up together as neatly as possible I would call this uh, semi neat uh, could be better but uh, there's a lot of wires in here it's uh, it's amazing uh, how much cabling and uh, there's a lot of uh, time of uh, planning to get all these circuitry uh, to to work together uh, so yeah so this is the power supply unit so it's finally finished it took it over uh, probably a month of time and many uh, changes in design just to get to this final uh, design that works it's always like I said earlier it's easy to design something and put it on a wooden board and get it working but try to design it into a functional appliance is a different story but this is all shielded isolated uh, you know it's everything eventually will translate into a slightly better sound just gonna turn this thing on I'm just going to show you part of the reason why I built this. It's mostly for noise. So this is just a noise sniffer. You can see it's very, very low. It's nothing. Even when you get super close to the transformer, look at that. Nothing is happening. It's very low. Uh, those transformers are medical grade transformers. They have a built-in shield around them and they're very, they're, they're not noisy at all. And uh, it makes a big difference. So you're talking about uh, three of them here. I'm just gonna, this is the noise without, by them having them off and turning them on. Not a huge difference. Just a little bit more, but not much more. And uh, once you put that cover on, it's pretty quiet. And uh, so in comparison, I'm just going to show you uh, what a uh, uh, switching mode transformer sounds like. And this is a switching mode transformer. And uh, look at that. And that track goes right through the line and everything. So switching mode power supplies, if they're uh, like they could really ruin your entire line, even though you're not plugged in, into them. So I would avoid them at all costs. Some of them are, they're not all bad. Some of them are actually decent, but unfortunately the majority of them are, are quite noisy and I would avoid them. If you have three of those in, in trying to power your unit, you're going to have a lot of noise going through your system, not alone uh, ruining the whole house uh, system as well. I hope you uh, liked uh, so far what's been going on. Please subscribe and some thumbs up keeps the video going a long way. That's pretty much I'm doing this for you guys. So a little support uh, it costs you nothing will help the channel keep on going. Um, I will uh, put a description on the part one and from there you can get part two of the D11 DAC. I'll put it in the link somewhere up top in this corner. If you don't know more about my GS11 speakers, I'll put a link on this corner for, uh, for you to uh, check out. Uh, I hope to see you again. We're going to keep updating you with uh, more videos on this exciting project, but this is, takes time, so just be patient. But uh, we're moving along. It's going to be an exciting DAC and the sound is going to be just amazing. Anyway, hope to see you again. Take care.